Guys, there's a major update coming in the pike for Ethereum very soon. I've been talking about this for months on this channel, and it's finally here. And there's a lot that you need to know. Many people are worried this could cause the price of Ether to tank. There's a major $500,000 opportunity for developers as a part of this. And there's a ton of frequently asked questions floating around like, What's going to happen if I hold Ether in my wallet on an exchange? What if I'm a developer? What if I run a node? I'm going to clarify everything in this video that you need to know as a blockchain developer myself who works the Ethereum technology on a daily basis. So if you're around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to become a blockchain master, step-by-step start to finish, break into the blockchain industry, increase your salary well past 100K, I can show you how to do that over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, so let's jump into this. The Ethereum upgrade, formerly known as Shanghai, now referred to as Chappella, is coming down the pike in just a few short weeks. This is a major upgrade for the Ethereum network, and I want to get into all the details in this video. So first of all, let's just summarize the update and exactly what it does before we get into the implications of this. So just a quick background, you know, Ethereum has this multi-year roadmap where it's moving from the initial version of Ethereum to its final vision of this really fast, scalable blockchain that can be the future of, you know, finance and potentially a big cornerstone of the entire internet as we know it. And a big part of this is Ethereum's transition towards proof of stake. I'll explain what that is. So basically, proof of stake is what's called a consensus protocol on top of Ethereum. It's basically the method by which Ethereum comes to agree upon new transactions and how they're settled on the blockchain. Again, a blockchain is just a worldwide computer that processes transactions, runs smart contracts, all that stuff. They basically a peer-to-peer -peer network of nodes or computers that all talk to one another, and they have to come up on this agreement anytime something new is added to the blockchain. So again, Ethereum started out as proof of work whenever it launched, just like Bitcoin. This is basically where you have miners who run the blockchain who solve cryptographic puzzles in order to add new transactions to blocks, okay? And then it switched to proof of stake, all right? Essentially where the miners get replaced by validators, and these validators lock up Ethereum cryptocurrency or Ether into their node or computer in order to validate transactions. And you're rewarded with new cryptocurrency if you act honestly and you're penalized by getting slashed or your cryptocurrency being taken away from if you act dishonestly. Now, this transition from proof of work to proof of stake has actually taken several years and has been executed across several distinct phases. So number one was the beacon chain, which shipped uh, in December 1st of 2020. That's how they created this new blockchain off to the side that was going to get merged into the existing Ethereum so they could turn proof of stake on, okay? And then that was followed up by the actual merge uh, several years later. The merge was shipped in uh, September 15th, 2022. This is when these two blockchains came together and proof of stake was actually turned on. Now, Ethereum did turn on proof of stake, but this was not the completion of the actual transition. There's a few things that are left to be accomplished. And that's the main reason for this most recent update, uh, the Chappella update, is to mostly wrap up everything that's left undone for Ethereum's transition from proof of work to proof of stake. Most notably, enabling ETH withdrawals from people who have staked it at any time between December 1st of 2020 and now. You know, this is the biggest part of the update that people are paying attention to, okay? Uh, this is one of the main reasons why people are worried that the price of Ether is going to tank. I'll talk about that here more in a minute. But essentially, you have to understand how proof of stake works again. Essentially, if you're going to uh, run a validator node, you take your Ether and you lock it up into that node and you can earn a passive income reward for acting honestly to help validate those transactions and run the blockchain. But you get penalized, of course, if you uh, act dishonestly. Now, again, whenever we launch the beacon chain, we set this separate blockchain off to the side and if you were going to run a validator, what you had to do was take your Ethereum cryptocurrency or Ether, send it to that beacon chain, okay, and then lock it up in your validator. And all of that Ether was illiquid, okay, until after this new update, Chappella update is going to happen. So basically, one of the biggest deals about the Chappella update is all the ETH that's been locked up from December 1st of 2020 till now, you know, like two and a quarter years, is now going to be free to withdraw and potentially hit the market. And this is true for everybody who's participated in staking Ether really in any way, unless you're talking about liquid staking, okay? So if you run a validator node and you locked up your Ether, now you'll be able to get it back if you want to. Or if you'd stake, you know, Ether on a centralized exchange like Coinbase, for example, a lot of those exchanges still had the agreements where, hey, we can't get our ETH back for you. And so for that reason, you're not going to be able to get your ETH back, but you will be able to after this upgrade. All right. So when's this going to happen? Well, it's going to happen approximately on April 12th of 2023. And the time recording this video, that's just a few short weeks away. Okay. So now I want to dig into one of the most important questions that people have is like, what's going to happen with the price of Ether after this update? Because again, the big worry on the street is that everybody who's locked up their Ether 
you know, since December 1st, 2020, and now is essentially just going to withdraw it because they haven't been able to take it since then. And they're just going to dump it under the market. And that's going to just put an insane amount of sell pressure on Ether. It's going to tank the price and, you know, cut it in half, whatever. Okay. So what do I think is going to happen? Well, again, this is not financial advice. Nobody has a crystal ball, but there's a few key scenarios that play out. One potential scenario is exactly what I was talking about. That everybody's worried about the price of Ether is going to tank. But another possible scenario is that it doesn't really impact the price of Ether that much or even at all, or that it could even be a positive thing for the Ethereum price. So I actually put a video out on my channel about a month ago analyzing this in detail. I'm not going to go as in depth in this video as I did in that one. But point number one is essentially everybody's got their ETH locked up into a node. Um, it's not like everybody's going to be able to just instantly take it and withdraw it and then go dump it on an exchange. So why is that? Well, there's actually going to be a withdrawal queue, okay? So if you want to take your money out of a node, you essentially have to get in line, and then those withdrawal requests have to be processed in sequence, and that prevents, like, everybody just coming to the network and then yanking their funds out of their nodes and then go, you know, dumping their Ether on chain instantly and causing a massive sell pressure event. And this is also by design because it helps protect the Ethereum network so that, you know, everybody doesn't just, you know, unstake ether all at one time and so let's say theoretically that you know everybody who wants to withdraw will do it in the you know amount of bandwidth they're allowed to based on sort of the rate limiting that's put in place by the blockchain a lot of that gets sold on a daily basis well the amount of ETH that would hit the market every day is still not really enough to just absolutely tank the ethereum price in the same way that something like you know the ftx collapse would have and the last big issue here is that a lot of people who you know took this risk of locking up their ether into a node and went through all the pain and the butt headache of setting up a node and running it and maintaining it that's a lot of work and a lot of those people have a much longer vested interest in the future of the ethereum network and they're not really the profile of somebody who's just looking for a really quick short-term opportunity who wants to go take out their ether and now just dump it after they went through all this work and especially since the ethereum price is not much higher than it was when this upgrade went live in december 1st of 2020. now a few quick counterparts to that is, you know, the markets are going to ultimately decide what happens to the price of Ether, regardless of what the behavior of the actual validators is. If the market thinks the validators are going to get spooked, then we could see some sell pressure on the Ethereum price, even if they're not the ones causing it. And it's really common for these big upgrades in crypto to be a buy the rumor, sell the news situation, where essentially... Uh, you know, crypto price might pump ahead of it, but then whenever it actually happens, like people start selling just to you know, cash out of any potential hype. Now, the last possible scenario here is that this is actually bullish for the Ethereum price. Now, why could that be? Well, essentially, now that Ethereum is going to be liquid whenever it's staked into a node, you could get a lot more people jump into this and start running validators, especially institutions, because now they can buy ETH below its all-time high price and then spin up validators at scale and start earning yield on this asset that has a ton of potential future upside. And for this reason, it could attract a lot of people into this space who formerly may not have been doing this because they don't want to lock up their ether and not get it back. And if you combine that with all the positive sentiment shift that's happened in the cryptocurrency space, you know, really since the beginning of the year and the thought that we could be at the beginning of a new bull trend, then all those things could be a perfect storm for a lot of tailwinds that could push Ethereum towards an S crypto expansion. All right, so now let's talk about the big $500,000 opportunity on the table for anybody who's technical, anybody who's a developer who can help out in this transition for the Chappella upgrade. Well, this really comes down to Ethereum's bug bounty program, okay? So pretty much all the time, Ethereum has an open $250,000 uh, you know, bug bounty program. If you can find anything wrong with the Ethereum protocol in any way that is a critical vulnerability, then you can get up to $250,000. Now, because this is a new upgrade rolling out, if you can find a problem, then the rewards have been temporarily doubled for Chappella vulnerabilities, okay? So you can win up to $500,000 if you find something wrong with the Ethereum protocol for the Chappella upgrade before it goes live. So how can you participate in this? Well, definitely go to ethereum.org, find the bug bounty page, okay? You can read the rules and then walk through how to submit a bug uh, with this link right here. It's going to open up to a Google form and you can see all the scope and the details for that on this page. All right, so now it's time to free frequently asked questions that I get all the time around updates just like this. So what's going to happen if you just simply are an Ethereum holder, like you hold some Ether, some Ethereum cryptocurrency, either in your wallet on an exchange? Well, really, there's nothing about this update that's going to affect um, your Ether balance in any way. You don't have to move wallets, you don't have to move anything on an exchange. As long as you just keep your funds in one spot, theoretically, nothing should change. Now, that also means you're not going to get any free coins out of this. There's no airdrop. There's no like 
uh, chain fork where you're going to have money that stays behind in a different wallet. I mean, theoretically there could, but the likelihood is really, really low. What happens if you are a blockchain developer? So I'll start off with if you have like smart contracts that you've put out on a blockchain, and there's really nothing about this network upgrade that's going to affect your applications in any way. Okay, you shouldn't have to change anything in your libraries, either on your client side. Everything should merge over pretty smoothly. That is unless you have any smart contracts that implement the self-destruct opcode because it can be considered deprecated. Now, the semantics don't exactly change for this network upgrade, but they will likely in subsequent ones and you should see EIP 6049 for more details. So what if you want a node? Well, if you are a non-staking node operator, all you need to do is update your client. You can check that out on Ethereum's blog. If you're a staker, what you need to do well, you need to make the upgrade for your Beacon node and also your validator client. You can see all the directions on their site here. And if you want to uh, walk through the withdrawal, like how do you do that? You can check out the withdrawal FAQ for more instructions. But make sure you actually do the upgrade because if you don't, you'll be stuck on an incompatible chain and you won't even be able to do things like send Ether. All right, so that's an overview of this big upgrade coming down the pipe for Ethereum in just a few short weeks. That's everything you need to know, you know, as a blockchain developer who works this technology on a daily basis. So I hope you like this video. As always, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. That really helps videos out so the more people learn about blockchain. And if you're as fast with this technology as I am, you want to get your hands dirty, how can you get started today? Well, you can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find those free courses there. that like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those videos and you went to the next step, or hey, maybe you don't take a master shortcut entirely, I can become a blockchain master step-by-step -step finish over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. Okay, you don't have to be an expert to get started right now. I've helped people with zero coding experience become real-world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. And until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.